Hey, what's going on everyone? I just got a great question emailed um, on how to move from a front end or back end dev position to a DevOps -y type of position. So some kind of more DevOps infrastructure platform involved um, kind of career track or job. The person that wrote had a learning plan. I'm just going to read it off for you quickly. First, I'm going to one, learn the Python basics, syntax, scripting, etc. Two, learn Linux sysadmin basics like network administration, building servers, security, system recovery, automation, etc. Three, complete your my Udemy course purchased. It's the uh, you can always find the link to that in the in the description. If you're interested in learning Linux system administration. Uh, it's a good one because you end up with a practical project, a WordPress server that you're running that you can add as many WordPress sites to as you'd like. Um, and in the meantime, you actually learn practical sysadmin skills. Number four, learn AWS. Number five, learn Docker. Number six, learn Terraform. Number seven, build projects. Something I'm gonna make a video on uh, shortly, as in like in 10 minutes. <laughs> and number eight, apply for jobs. And basically the question is, does this make me eligible to apply for junior uh, DevOps jobs? My answer is yes, absolutely. I, I actually think it's a great uh, kind of learning plan. And I'll, I'll uh, give one caveat, which is probably going to piss some people off. The, uh, especially on the Linux side, as much as I love Linux, deep, deep Linux knowledge is often only going to really pay off. Uh, at the later kind of stages of, of, of like a DevOps career. Early on in a DevOps type role, you're gonna be stringing together existing tools, kind of gluing them together with scripts, looking at a build pipeline, um, dealing with Bash and Python and various things that other people have written and either rewriting them, changing them, integrating them into some new kind of pipeline. But it's gonna be around kind of build tools. How do you, you know, build your uh, do you use Packer and build AMIs uh, for Amazon? Do you use, um, you know, Docker? Uh, so you need to know like how Docker files work, uh, that you shouldn't just, uh, you know, import an entire Debian or Ubuntu environment, but you should probably use something that's minimal like Alpine. You know, do you actually use this sort of constantly updated live configuration on real long lived instances like uh, using Puppet or Chef or that kind of, or Ansible, SaltStack, that kind of configuration management stuff. Um, there's a lot of different approaches and just being able to distinguish between those approaches, recognize what's being used and kind of adapt to that is is part of the part of the job. Um, and then really you're just, you're a lot of it is stringing together tools, at least at the first couple levels of this, of this career track. So, and here's the part that's going to piss people off. In this modern day and age, where your employer almost certainly will be on a public cloud, the, the troubleshooting methodology is, is often going to be like only the worst problems get, get troubleshooting, get deep troubleshooting time from engineers because engineers are expensive. Almost always, if you have a networking blip or some kind of weird hardware error or like the kernel is freaking out about storage, um, almost always, instead of using your deep Linux knowledge, you're going to end up uh, murdering that instance where it stands uh, and just having an automatically provisioned one pop up in its place. Uh, it will barely be a blip on your monitoring, much less an alert. You're not going to need a lot of this super deep um, Linux knowledge, at least not at first, um, because like really gnarly Linux hardware issues that are persistent uh, tend to get handed off to senior people. Now, it's a great place to learn, right? It's like you have a senior person mentoring you, they're working on the problem, they're like the primary subject matter expert, and you work with them, they teach you the ropes, you do a bunch of reading on how the kernel works and how what it's doing in that specific case that you're running into. That's a cool way to pick that stuff up. The Linux knowledge you mentioned is, uh, is perfect. You need networking basics. When you learn Amazon, that's one of the things you should focus on is, uh, you know, VPCs, uh, regions, availability zones, how different Amazon services are scoped into that like networking world. Is a resource regional? Is it uh, AZ specific? These types of things are more important, I would say, than, uh, than spending your time in like super deep Linux kernel land. Although I think that's super fun. And if you like it, you should do it. You should make time for it. Um, but again, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of where the, the, the places are that have the biggest leverage 
uh, when you're getting into a junior DevOps position. So that's a very long and hopefully detailed and interesting answer to the question, which is, is that kind of learning path uh, and that kind of skill set enough to land a junior position? Yes. And in the next video, kind of the question everyone's been dying for, but I want to make sure I give a really good answer so it deserves its own video. I'm going to talk about what types of learning and portfolio projects can you create that are actually compelling for um, hiring managers and technical interviewers that are going to be looking at your GitHub repo and hiring you for uh, DevOps related roles. I have been an interview or a technical interview hundreds of times. I've seen a lot of different uh, projects. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. What should you build to learn and to show off to get a good DevOps job? I'll see you in the next one. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. It helps. Uh, if you can share this anywhere, if you find it interesting, please do. Cool. Peace.